This is Splash, a youth arts workshop. Today's class is an astronaut in coloured pencils, part five. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Splash. I'm Charlie Newton and I'm your teaching artist today. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to, today we're going to work, continue to work in coloured pencils. I've been enjoying this. And this is going to be our last day using coloured pencils. And so today I'm just going to uh, uh, do a few little details and then I'm going to, I want to talk to you about how you allow your picture to evolve. So we started with a spaceman, we're still using a, a spaceman. The first change I made uh, from the original picture is I changed the, the white person to a black person so that I could make a statement about that would hopefully would encourage kids to dream no matter who you are where you're from what neighborhood you're from whether you're rich or poor black or white that uh, i want you to dream that you can be whatever you want to be and the best way to accomplish that is to believe in yourself no matter who don't believe in you and to work hard at your craft work hard at being you because there's, there's something about you that's unique. You are a rare gem. And there's something about you that's different than everybody else in the world. So if you don't get distracted, you know, always strive to reach your goals. You will land up there somewhere. And I especially want to say that since I happen to be African American to African American kids, that no matter what it looked like, you can accomplish your dreams and your goals. <clears throat> so when we changed the white person to the black person, I used my bust, my plaster bust of a black person so that you would see the slight differences in the bone structure. Uh, there was a slight dis uh, difference that would make this person look more uh, black or African or African American. Uh, but um, in but I'm still trying to make a statement. So now I'm trying to find ways with drawing to make this picture look more like something that I would do outside of class. And uh, one of the changes I'm going to make is instead of putting a NASA emblem, I'm going to create an emblem that would say uh, Africa on, on this guy's shoulder. And the background, you know, I, I, I I never knew what I was going to do with the background, but the back now I know I'm going to put some archetypes in the background, or my archetypes are shapes that remind me of my culture, and uh, we're going to just so that's going to be an abstract quality. So the face and the helmet is more realistic, and you can see that begins to dissipate as we slow or as your eye scans downward on the page into the body. And so before we do the background, I found a silver, I forgot I even had a silver uh, color pencil that I'm going to try to use. And I have a very light gray, a cold light gray. I'm going to go back and do a few little details in the helmet to see if I can enhance the helmet just a little bit. And these are just some things that you do you know, to see if it works. It may not even work the way I want it to. And these are little subtle, there's some little subtle things that you do with your art that nobody's going to notice but you. So to enhance this gray line I just made, I'm going to use my, go back with white to show that more light is hitting that area. When you make your art, at some point, you want it to be more than you just trying to reproduce what you see. Uh, that's when it becomes, to me, that's when it becomes art. When you are making an individual statement. And it's not always intentional. You're not, you're not 
you know, always consciously thinking that I'm trying to make a statement, but what you are consciously thinking about is I want it to be me. I want it to look like, you know, I have my way of expressing things that may be different than somebody else's way. So you really, yeah, like I say, it's really instinct. It's good to go by your instinct. You don't always know why you're doing certain things, but you do it because it feels right. So I'm just doing little details now that I'm picking up. Remember I said, you know, always attempt to do the hard thing. And pretty soon, you gain the confidence that you can draw anything. Always believe in yourself. Always believe I can do this. I'm just moving things out with my white here on the cabinet. So my, as I'm going over colors, sometimes these colors are mixing together and I don't care. It's okay. The little writing that's in this area here, I left out on purpose because it don't serve a purpose for me for this picture. So you want to choose what to draw and what to what to leave in and what to leave out. I just want to show with these marks that this there's glass in front of his face. I don't see that on the picture, so, but I, I just want to do that. So I'm doing it. This is gonna be scratches in the glass. I could do something like that, but I'm not sure if that'll work, so I'm not gonna venture. Now I'm taking my silver and see where I can use it. These are things that people won't notice, but you notice it because you are the artist. And they make the picture, they help to make the picture even though you won't actually notice it yourself. I'm looking for a dark blue green. Sometimes I forget what color I, I use. When I draw with color pencils, I use a lot of colors. I think I was using this one. So I'm actually trying to finish my picture. And I'm doing all this before I work on the background. The advantage to working on a table is that you can turn the paper. <laughs> so I'm trying to use the colors that I've already used. And I'm doing a lot of overlays going on top.
Now, the wild thing about it is I thought before class, I thought this would be the only pencil that I would use. Well, these two, the gray and the silver. But uh, as you can see, once I start working, I, I keep seeing things that I want to do. Keep changing my mind about things. This is a greenish, a dark green uh, color I'm using here. I want this gray here to be a lot darker. So these little things I'm doing, these little details, uh, you know, they are unnoticeable, but they could make the picture. Seems like I'm doing nothing to some of you, and that's because you can't see, you know, as close to the picture as I am. So when you do your pictures, you'll see. If I have time, if we have time today, We'll start another color pencil uh, picture that's more abstract. But what I'm going to do is use abstract in the background of this picture. I'm gonna use abstract shapes. If I remember, I tried to tell you why I'm choosing certain shapes.
this a blood red. This is a scarlet lake. This is a pretty cool red. It's a kind of, kind of symbolic red for me. This is crimson lake. It's too dark. I may use it later. This one is also scarlet lake. For some reason it looks a little bit different. Here's another red. I'm not going to use that one. Pretty soft. So remember, I said I was going to make this look. So in my mind, this is what I'm trying to say. This spaceman, this astronaut, might be from Africa. This is not, or he, if he's not from Africa, maybe the equipment or the space program, maybe this is an African space program. Sometimes we, we are, America is a huge island, and sometimes we forget that there are other parts of the world and people are doing things in other parts of the world. As an artist, you can't afford to be ignorant like that. Because those, that's the type of art that causes a, a lot of ugly things in the world. For instance, a lot of people, some of you kids may not realize that we're not the first person. We're, we're not the first nation to reach Mars. But an Arab nation. Uh, and we should celebrate. <clears throat> also, the symbols that I'm using are uh, cultural, and they sort of date my age, as well as my way of thinking dates my age. So I lived through a Vietnam War. You can just turn that off. Turn the phone off. And uh, maybe this is sometime in the future. So I'm making up a symbol here. I'm creating a symbol. of that uh, organization, this imaginary organization that is sending this guy into space.
So in class, we talk about process a lot. So this, you're giving a, a, a good example with this project that it takes time. Process means time. You're going to spend, you're going to go through several different steps. And only you, you will have, you will create your own process. So what I'm telling you is a way of doing it, but not the way of doing it. You're going to create your own way. And that's going to make your work unique to you. If this was a mixed medium project, I would go in with some uh, silver paint here. Angie, can you let me know when it's 30 minutes? Because I didn't see the time. So my goal is to finish this today. We will finish this today. That's my goal. It's like knowing when to stop. Sometimes it's very hard to know when to stop.
text. So now I'm going to let's see. Do I have to open the thing? I'll leave the silver there. Pick up this light gray. Get these pencils down. Start on the background. And please let me know when I have 10 minutes, if you remember. I don't think that's going to be a problem. A lot of times in class, what I'll do is I'll tell the kids you have 10 minutes, or you, then I'll tell them you have five minutes. Because it's easy to get lost in what you're doing and neglect to finish. And we try to finish up every class. And the art class is just to uh, art class is, is always practice. So you do your best work at home in solitude by yourself. So a lot of the arts are performing arts. By that I mean dance music you know, opera ballet theater those are performing arts we don't consider um, what we do even though i think these maybe we should consider it performing arts and maybe we can get a little bit more respect but <laughs> 
we don't consider drawing and painting and sculpture, the visual arts as the you know, performing arts. So they're actually done better in solitude. So let's see if I can put some, uh, do something back here. Now I, I'm not, okay, I'm just gonna use colors. I'm very free thinking and went on with what I'm doing here. So within my mind are what I call African chip. African chip are archetypes that I created years ago that will remind me of African textiles and uh, not only African textiles, but uh, you notice I'm allowing myself to even color over. Uh, I think I'll do it here too, even though you may not be able to pick it up. African textiles and uh, quilt making. Southern quilt making. So these, there are certain shapes like the pyramids I'm doing now are called running pyramids. They just remind me of my heritage. So I have no plans. I'm just, whatever colors seem like they may work, I'm using them.
So as you can see, I'm using the cross hatching technique here. Go to go down here to the lighting up our next country. That country is too dark. Just about done, and I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to start another picture just to show you what we'll be doing next time and the way of thinking for doing a background like this you have to be not you have to not be judgmental and just be intuitive Be intuitive. I'm up to so the background could actually be a memory. Now I'm going to allow some of the background colors to flow down into the figure. Thank you. So, how do you know when you're finished? It's when you have no nothing left to do. You know, there's no, no more ideas. I'm very close to finishing now. <clears throat> I'm just trying to develop a degree of, of color harmony here. Oh, I'm trying to pull not just color har harmony, um, just I'm trying to pull the picture together. And you can decide if it's successful or not.
okay, now I'm almost like, okay, I don't have to do anything here. I don't, I don't need to do much here. I don't need much there. Okay. Let me do a little something there and here. So it's very sketchy at the bottom. Now all I need to do is sign the picture. So I told myself just now, oh, my picture, I already signed it. <laughs> because remember, it was finished. When I finished the face, the picture was finished. And all I'm doing now is just, it just takes a little time to fill in the spaces. So that's the astronaut, the black astronaut. I want to show you something right quick. So we have about six minutes, I think, five or six minutes. Okay. So I'll turn back to this page. But what I would like for, you, for my students to do And this will help you learn the, this medium. You can choose any color you want. I'm going to just choose, I'll choose a, a very dull blue. And without thinking, I know there are certain things I like, so I actually developed this when I was at University of Tennessee at Knoxville. I'll just do some shapes. Okay, don't do too many shapes, but I want you to begin to color in your shapes. I want you to use one picture at a time, but as you color in, I want you to use hatch marks. We're going to do overlays, so I'll do one shape here. And keep in your mind, this is, ab this is an abstract picture. So the marks are very important. Every mark you make is important. Every mark. So I could go over this mark. I'm turning my paper so I could get a crosshatch. So I have pencil strokes going at this angle. So now I want pencil strokes to go at that angle. So it's, it's going to be easier for me to do that. So actually, pencil stroke is going to go at this angle. So it's going here, and now it's going to go here. So when I turn the page, I can see it better. I can see the angle of this uh, blue better. So I'm just choosing random colors. So I'm using hatch marks. So first step, these lower shapes. Second step, hatch mark. Then third step, not, it's not necessarily uh, hatch marks. I'll use this uh, ochre. But I want you to be able to go in, and you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. But what I'm doing is I'm going in to certain areas well, the paper might be white. You don't have to do it this way, but I want it to be, I want your picture to be sort of complex. So see, I'm taking my time and something has already developed. See that mark there? Developed. So I can, I notice it. See, I want you to, drawing and painting art, the best art is meditative. It's, med it's like meditation. And when you are totally focused, you can see what the picture wants to be. So you're not in a hurry. So you see, this is more interesting than what I had just done with just one hash mark. Now I have some different designs appearing. So when I don't know what to do, I stop. And then I make a choice, like I say, okay, in this area, I'll use the same color and I'll just go here. Oh, by the way, I didn't do this, but I want you to, each pencil that you pick up, I want you to save, put it in your hand or put it to the side so that you can go back and use those colors. 
and that's what's going to give you some some harmony. Now, at some point, I need to use a technique similar to that somewhere else. It don't have to be the same colors, but the technique needs to be uh, similar. You know, three colors. So, my, your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, will tell you what to do next. So my subconscious mind, my unconscious mind, told me, do something with this space. Now I'm going to choose a different color. I don't have to choose it. I can use a color that I've already used, or I could choose a different color. I choose a different color. I'm barely touching this because this is a very heavy color, this red. And I'm doing hash marks in the opposite direction. So this is a certain technique that I've made up. And I'm going to go and use this color, which is, uh, I've already used this ochre before. And just for unity and balance and all that, I'm going to start placing this color somewhere. And so I see some lines like this here. And once I see those appear, I'm going to do a similar to, to what how I did it in this shape here. So this shape, even though there are different colors, it looks similar. The colors look similar, don't they? And I might decide, you know, that's not working too well for me. So I don't want to do too much of that. I can go to a different color. I'm sure we're about, it's about time to finish. I'm going to finish after I do. In a couple of minutes, in two minutes, I'm going to just stop. Four. Mm -hmm. So, chose another color. The blue very cool color next to a very warm color. So I just made that color pretty solid like the ochre there. And I'll leave that solid. And uh, I'll do that somewhere else, same way. And at some point, I'm going to stop picking up pencils. You know, and I'll have certain amount of colors that I'll stick to. And I'm going to a pink. This is a, a very warm pink. I'm going to make this one solid. Now, for the older kids, are they older? I mean, teenagers to 90. I want you to, for the older kids, I want you to actually look at your marks and find marks within your marks. I'm on a green here. I know that my subconscious mind told me to find a nice green, a nice pretty green. <laughs> so that's going to stand out. So I think I'll use this green here true this is called true green this sort of looks like grass in the summertime when when the light hits the grass and my you know, i just knew i wanted this green a green sort of like this why i don't know so the more pressure i put on the uh, pencil or the paper, the more solid it's going to look. This paper has a little bit of texture. Remember? So can you see what's beginning to develop? And let the picture, try to allow the picture 
to tell you what to do next. So it, you may spend a lot of time thinking about the first thing to do and the second thing to do. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is put my pencils back in this and all the pencils. So when I come next time, I can start with these pencils here. Now, the, the strongest thing to do is to not choose too many more pencils. I, see, I have one, two, three, six pencils, no more than 10 pencils. And uh, to see how many different ways I could put uh, these shapes together. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Let me turn back to the picture that we just finished. But these are techniques. Doing this will help you gain the techniques that you need to do something a little bit more realistic, like this. And always look at realism as abstraction and, and look at abstraction as realism. So I drew this as an abstract in my mind and the abstract that I'm working on, I'm thinking realistic in my mind. I'm thinking detailed. But here, I'm thinking abstraction. Okay. Well, one more class in the can. We did it. We made it. And I hope that you will replay these classes and practice, 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 because practice make perfect. And remember, nothing... Uh, beats a failure but a try. This has been Charlie Newton with Splash. And as always, remember, art is for everyone. Bye-bye.